This video is part of an online course on commutative algebra and will be about the gad a gadget called the causal complex. So I'm first going to um, recall a little bit about regular sequences and then I'll explain what the causal complex is and then I'll explain how to use the causal complex to solve a, a problem about regular sequences. So we recall that if we've got a ring R, a regular sequence is a sequence of elements x1, x2 and so on, such that x1 is not a zero divisor in R, and x2 is not a zero divisor in R over x1, and x3 is not a zero divisor in R over x1, x2, and so on. And there's one other condition that I forgot to mention last lecture, which you have to add the non-triviality condition that r over x1 up to xn is not zero, because if you allow this to be zero, then there are lots of rather silly examples of regular sequences. Um, so, um, well, the definition of regular sequence depends on the order. And we can ask the following question. Is a permutation of a regular sequence also regular. And if it is, that would make life much easier because we wouldn't have to worry about the order of the regular sequence. And the answer is no in general. Um, so here's an example. Let's just take a polynomial ring in three variables and quotient it out by xz. So this is just the coordinate ring of a union of two hyperplanes meeting along a line. When I say hyper, sorry, two planes meeting along a line. And now we can look at the sequence of elements x minus 1 and xy, and this is regular because x minus 1 is not a zero divisor here. And if we quotient out this ring by the ideal x minus 1, we're just setting x equals to 1. So we set z equals to 0 and just polynomials in y. And this just becomes y and it's not a zero divisor. On the other hand, x, y, x minus 1 is not regular. And this is because x, y is a zero divisor. Because if you multiply it by z, it becomes zero. So it's a little bit funny that um, this element is a zero divisor in our original ring, but stops being a zero divisor if you quotient out by something. So you can see that... Um, if you permute a regular sequence, it need not be regular in general. Um, however, it's true if R is a local ring. Um, that when I say true, I mean the permutation of a regular sequence is regular. So for a local ring, the condition that r divided by the regular sequence is non-zero just says that all elements x1, x2, and so on, xn of the regular sequence are in the maximal ideal m of r. Um, well, the proof that for r being a local ring can't be entirely trivial because it's not true for all rings, so we must somehow use the fact that r is local in proving this. And to do this, we will... Um, define the causal complex of a sequence. Um, you can define the causal complex for any sequence, but it will only really be interesting if x1 up to xn is a regular sequence. So let, let's first take n equals 1 and look at the causal complex of an element x1. Well, the causal complex in this case is just naught goes to r goes to r, here we multiply by x1, goes to r over x1, goes to 0. So it's a rather obvious exact sequence. And we notice that it is exact if x1 is not a 0 divisor, which is most of the condition that x1 should be a regular sequence. For n equals 2, we take a sequence of two elements, and we define the causal complex like this. It, it takes naught goes to r, goes to r squared, goes to r, goes to r over x1, x2, 
goes to zero. Um, and in this case, the differential is defined as follows. It takes the element 1 to x1, x2 in R2, and it takes an element a, b in R2 to um, x2, a minus x1, b. And the map from R to R over that is the, is the um, obvious map. And um, note, by the way, there's a, there's a minus sign there, which you need in order to make this differential followed by this, sorry, the composition of these two differentials equal to zero. Um, and in general, the causal complex is defined in a rather similar way. What, what it looks like is um, the following. It, it, you, you take naught goes to R, goes to R, to the n goes to r to the n choose 2 and so on all the way up to r to the n choose n minus 2 goes to r to the n choose n minus 1 goes to r to the n choose n goes to r over x1 up to xn goes to 0. So another way of writing these is that these are just the exterior powers of, of r. So, so you can think of this as being r, the ex first exterior power of r the second exterior power of R, and so on. Um, and what we'd like to do is um, define this and also check it's exact if the, um, if, if the sequence is regular. Well, the easy way to define it and prove it's exact is to, is to get the causal sequence for n um, elements by splicing together two copies of the causal sequence for n minus 1 elements. So suppose we've got the causal sequence for x1 up to x n minus 1. So this is going to map 0 goes to r, goes to r to the n minus 1, goes to, then we'll go to r to the n minus 1, goes to r, goes to r over um, x1 up to x n minus 1. So here's a copy of the causal sequence for n minus 1 elements. Now we're going to take a second copy of it. So it's exactly the same as the first row. So what's the point of writing this out twice? Well now what we're going to do is we're going to define a um, map between these two things and, th and this map is going to be um, um, given by multiplication by xn here and we have to be a little bit careful because what I want to do is I want to put in some minus signs so um, the, 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 the signs here alternate so you remember on the previous sheet we had a, a little sign here and the signs in general come by, by making them alternate. And the reason for this is we can now define the causal complex where we almost define it by taking the sum of these two bits here. As our causal complex. So the terms of our nth causal complex are going to be the sums here. So we're going to get um, Naught goes to r goes to well. If we take r plus r to the n minus one, we get r to the n, and so on. Um, and the differential is given by taking the obvious maps from this thing to this thing, as the sum of that and that and that. And the reason we put minus signs in here is so that the composition of two differentials is zero. Well, there's one thing we have to be a little bit careful about. Um, what we actually do is we cross out this bit. So the, the causal complex ends with r goes to r over x1 up to x to the n. Um, so we, we, we replace, we, we, we not only cross off this bit, but we replace this, we quotient out this bit by xn. So we sort of quotient out this by the image of that and then delete that. So we, we do a little bit of twiddling right at the end. And otherwise, we just get r to the, um, the, the the exterior powers of r and a differential and so on. Um, so 
that sort of more or less defines what the causal complex is. Um, if you write out a formula for the differential explicitly, we see that the causal complex does not depend on the order of x1 up to xn up to isomorphism. And to see that you have to sort of work out what work out what the differential is explicitly and you see that it's it's really independent of the order. And I'm not going to do that because it's a slightly tedious and I will get it wrong if I try and do it. Um, so um, now we want to show that if x1 up to xn is regular, it implies the causal complex is exact. Well, most of this is fairly easy. Um, if you define the complex consisting exactly of these pink things, then it's a very easy exercise to check it's exact. And the only problem is we're not quite defining the causal complex to be these pink things here because we've sort of crossed off this term here and um, twiddled the last term very slightly. Um, it turns out that this means the causal complex is obviously exact except um, right at the end. So we've got this slight problem that we're going from, um, if, if I write out the last bit, we've got um, r here, r to the n minus 1 goes to xn, goes to r, and this goes to r over x1 up to xn minus 1. And the only problem is um, exactness at this term here, that um, we, we need to know that if something here maps to 0 in r, then it's the image of something here. Well, if it maps to 0 in this bit here, um, I guess that yellow isn't quite visible, so let me do it in green. If it maps to zero in here, then it's certainly the image of something there that's easy to check. But as I said, we deleted this. So all we know is that its image is zero in here, and we want to know it's, it's in the image of something there. Well, to do that, we would like to know that the image in here is zero. And we can argue as follows. Suppose we've got an element of, of, of this represented by an element a here and an element b here, whose image here is zero. Well, then the image of b here must also be zero. Now, if this map here is injective, um, this implies the image of b in this group here is also zero, which makes it easy to prove exactness. So xn injective on r over x1 up to xn minus 1 implies exactness. That's assuming we've, we've shown exactness for the causal complex on n minus 1 elements. As long as xn is injective on this, then the causal complex on n elements is, is in, injective. Well, this is exactly the condition that x1 up to xn is regular. Well, at least it's most of the condition that x1 up to xn is regular. So we see that if x1 up to xn is regular, this implies the causal complex is exact. And this is very nice because it gives us a way of producing um, exact res resolutions of modules. And because you see the causal complex is a resolution of this um, module here by free modules, so we see that if x1 up to xn is regular, we get a finite free resolution of the module r over x1 up to xn. And this is very exciting if you do homological algebra because you can use this free resolution to calculate x groups and tor groups of, of this module here. 
Um, of course, not all modules over a ring can be um, constructed as so not, e even if they're generated by one element, they aren't necessarily of this form with x1 up to x in a regular sequence. Um, for instance, if it has a finite free resolution of length n, this implies that a lot of all its tor groups for, for um, sufficiently lot for, for anything bigger than n vanish, but there are plenty of examples of modules over rings with an infinite number of non-zero tor groups. So, so this is actually a, not all modules can be written like this. Um, well, um, what we would like to do is, is, is ask if the causal complex is exact, is x1 up to xn regular? And the answer is no in general. The reason for this is that we actually gave a counterexample to this at the beginning of the lecture. If we take a sequence such that x1, x2 is regular, then the causal complex is exact. But if x2, x1 is not regular, it has an isomorphic causal complex. So the causal complex of this is still exact. But if x2 is a zero divisor, as in the example at the beginning of the lecture, then the, the causal complex will not be exact. However, the answer is yes if R is a local ring. And a consequence of this is that R local implies a permutation of a regular sequence is regular. So this will prove the result we state at the beginning of the lecture and is very useful. It means you don't need to worry too much about the order of a regular sequence as long as you're just working with local rings, um, in which case all the elements of the regular sequence are in the maximal ideal. So to finish off with, I'm just going to explain roughly why when R is a local ring, um, the um, exactness of the causal complex implies x1 up to xn is regular. And what we do for this is, um, um, in fact, we don't need the full exactness of the full causal complex. We only need exactness of the, the h1 term. So, so let's write hi for the ith homology of the causal complex. Um, actually, I shouldn't put h, I should have put h, i of x1 up to x n for the um, i homology of the, com of the causal complex on x1 up to x n. Um, and then we find we get the following um, long exact sequence. So I'll first write down the long exact sequence and then explain roughly where it comes from. So the only bit of it we're interested in is going to be h1 of k x1 up to xn minus 1 goes to, sorry, um, goes to h1 of x1 up to xn minus 1 goes to h1 of x1 up to xn goes to m over x1 up to xn minus 1 goes to m, sorry, that should be an r. Get my notation muddled up over x1 up to xn minus 1. So, um, so this map here is multiplication by xn, and this map here is also multiplication by xn. And now, uh, this exact sequence um, holds whether or not the ring is local, and where it comes from is if we go back and look at the um, construction of the um, co causal complex on x1 up to xn, we get it by splicing together two copies of the causal complex for x1 up to xn minus 1. And if you sort of um, do a bit of diagram chasing on that, it's not too difficult to find out you get a sort of long exact sequence where in general this would be an hi and an hi and an, an and an hi, and here we would have an hi minus 1, and it would sort of go on like that. 
Um, I'm not going to give the proof of this because um, most proofs of diagram chasing are very easy to do and very boring to watch somebody else do them. So I just leave it as an exercise. Um, anyway, the key point is here. We're assuming the causal complex on x1 up to xn is exact. This means the homology vanishes. So in other words, this term here would be equal to zero. And let's see what consequences that gives. Well, first of all, well, it gives two consequences. The first one is that um, this implies that this map here is injective. So, so if x1 up to xn minus 1 is uh, regular, so is x1 up to xn. So that side of it um, reduces us to showing that x1 up to xn minus 1 is regular. Well, to show that x1 up to xn minus 1 is regular, we would like to show that this term here is 0. So we can ask, is this 0? Well, uh, what information do we have about this? Well, if this vanishes, we know this map here is on to. Now for general rings, um, the fact that we've got the map multiplication by xn is a surjective map on modules doesn't really tell us very much about the modules. There's um, you know, lots of modules where multiplication by some ring element is surjective. Um, however, in the special case, um, when R is local, we have the famous Nakayama's lemma, which says that if M is a finitely generated R module and M times M equals M, where M is the maximal ideal, then m equals 0. Well, let's go back and apply this um, to this module here. So let's, let's apply it to m being h1 of x1 up to xn minus 1. Then xn from m to m is on to by assumption, and xn is contained in the maximal ideal because um, um, for a local ring, um, um, elements of a regular sequence have to be in the maximal ideal. So m times m equals m, so m equals zero. And m was, of course, just this module here. So h1 of x1 up to xn minus 1 equals 0. So by induction, so using some sort of inductive assumption, x1 up to xn minus 1 is regular, which is what we wanted to prove. So um, this completes the sketch of the proof that for regular sequences over a local ring, the order doesn't matter. OK, I think that's enough about um, regular sequences for the moment. The next lecture will be about the next um, type of local ring, which are Gorenstein local rings, which are, uh, is a slightly stronger condition than being Cohen-Macaulay.